But hello there, backyard astronomers. Welcome to Dream World Observatory. Today we're going to continue our conversation about calibration frames. Stick around, this is going to be part two. Uh, this could be interesting. Okay, I know you're not excited about doing calibration frames again. Well, we're not doing them again. Actually, this is part two. That's going to be two or three parts to this that's going to be interesting. Uh, during the last time that we were looking at calibration frames, we were looking at how to take them. And I did them on a, um, a Nebulosity 4. Uh, Nebulosity 4 is a good program. But the program that I was recording with was not a good program. So there were some things that I wanted you to see that you could only hear me say that this time I'm going to, you're going to be able to see that. And, and that will make it more understanding. Uh, since then, there has come up some questions, uh, not only about uh, dark frames and all, but also about uh, flats. And we will get into some flats a little bit later. Um, so what, uh, what the question was about darks was I had mentioned something about, well, I had suggested that in order to do darks and all, um, being the fact that it took so long to do darts, uh, so that you wouldn't have to take them every time, that you needed to get a a method uh, of, of how you're going to operate, and therefore uh, you would make a library of darks and bias and uh, maybe flats. It all depends on how you look at that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, well, let, let's uh, let's think about that library thing for a minute. Uh, let me show you something right here uh, about what I'm talking about as a library. Okay, this is what we mean by calibration frames uh, library. I'm calling mine a calibration frame acquisition for ZWO ASI 1600MC cooled. And that's my camera I'll be using to take the, uh, the, the darks and the bias and, and actually the, the, the lights. Uh, it's just a one-page thing that I come up with. Uh, it's really in Office, and uh, it's nothing more but a text file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep up with darks, bias, and flaps. And we're going to talk about bias first. Now, under bias, I'm going to have a, we're going to call it a bias uh, name. And we're going to show how many exposures we're going to do. Say, for instance, uh, 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 let's do, just for grins, let's do 20. And the temperature uh, should be cooling down to negative uh, uh, 20. And the category, now this is an option right here. Uh, you can actually put it here if you want to. But here's what category is. The category is one of these down here. My camera and a lot of other cameras uh, today are having... Um, the same kind of, uh, should I say, defaults. Uh, there's one for real, what they call lucky shots. This is high speed. Uh, you can set it for 300 gain with offset of 65. Now, the default or the unity, it's called unity gain. It's where a lot of people are shooting everything. Uh, you set the gain for 139 to offset for 21. And then you got a long exposure, which is what everybody always really did for... Uh, CCDs, uh, they put in it and they shoot five minutes, 10 minutes or whatever, that's for one frame. So you can still do that. But when you do it with this camera, you need to sit in the game for zero and offset for 10. For now, we're just gonna talk about biased. Now on biased, uh, like I said, you can drop the category and I'll show you in a minute why you can drop the category. But we're gonna do, uh, how many we're gonna do? We're gonna do 20. And we're going to be doing them at negative 20. Okay. Then we'll make a, a master. Uh, and I'll show you how we do that. Now, in order to see how to do all of these, how to make these files, uh, the, mass, uh, the, the darks, the bias, and the flats, and the masters form, go look at the previous uh, video for uh, calibration frames, and it'll tell you exactly how to shoot them. Uh, we're not going to go into all of that here. We're just going to, what the idea here is to, put together a library. All right, now, uh, I think that's pretty much all we need to say about a bias. So let's go over to, uh, we're gonna use Nebulosity 
and on this particular one. Now you can use Sequence Generator Pro. I'm not going to show much about that yet. I, I want to, to do this first and then later on down the road we'll, we'll start talking about Sequence Generator Pro. Okay, so let's step over to Nebulosity and see what we got. Okay, we're in Nebulosity now. This is Nebulosity 4.1. Um, we're going to be taking our acquisition with our, with our frames with uh, Nebulosity, and we'll actually do uh, stacking or whatever with this. It'll be a lot easier to show you on here. This is a very good program. It's, uh, it's, it's payware, but it's a very good program, and I really love it. Um, there are other programs you'll probably be interested in, and I'll show you way on down the road some of them. But uh, for now, uh, my opinion, you can't get around this one. This one's good. Okay, we're going to do some biased. All right, first off, we, we've loaded in. You need to load your camera. I'm not going to go into all that. I think I've already showed you that before, how you need to load your camera. All right, we, in order to do a biased, you need to shoot um, at the fastest speed that your camera can possibly do. Now, you need to look on your spec sheet for your camera, and it'll show you uh, the fastest and the, and the slowest. Or all the range of your shutter speeds that you can use. You need to use the fastest one for your bust. In my case, it's point zero 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 three two. I think that's considered to be thirty-two micro microseconds. I believe that's what it is. All right, we're going to set the gain for one thirty-nine and offset for twenty-one which is what we call unity gain and we want to shoot uh i think we said uh how many did we say 20 we're going to do 20 of them all right so now we've set that up now before you do anything you need to go down here to your directory now i've already had this pulled up before and we're going to be using unity and let me back up on this a minute uh, i wanted to show you this this all right I, I've got a file set up called Nebulosity Images. Under that, I've got for a couple of cameras. We're not even going to get into them. But my ZWO camera has listed under it Bias ZWO, Darks ZWO, and Flats. Now, under Bias ZWO, if you click on that, if you look, you'll see Bias Long, Bias Lucky, and Bias Unity. This is why you don't even have to add anything to your category uh, slot on the name if you set up your files this way. I've gone back and added this so that it will sort these out by, by Long, Lucky, and Unity under Bias. Uh, that way it'll, it'll just save you some typing and you won't have such a long name. It will automatically go where it needs to go. That is if you'll take and put this file right here into this column and that'll make it where your directory will already have it. If you look down here, uh, I can't show you at the same time, but down at bottom, if you read it, it says Bias Unity. It will automatically put it there for you. So we're good to go. All right. Now that we uh, got that set, let's, uh, let's catch them. Now, what it's doing is it's going to shoot 20 of these bias frames. And I'm sure you remember what those are for. Those are the noise that it's just a matter of having electrical energy on your camera. It doesn't have anything to do with what it's doing. It's just the fact that it's on. And it, that produces noise. That's what you see those little specks all are. We haven't got the camera cooled all the way down. That's because it's about a thousand degrees in Florida. So I don't care how big one of these cameras you get. It ain't going to get it cool enough in the daytime. I can tell you that. So this is what this would be done. So you'll probably want to do these in, in the evening when you can't do anything else because it'll be cooler and you'll e be easier to get your camera cooled way on down to negative 20 and negative 15. Uh, okay, that being said, there we have them. Now you want to look at them. You just go over to file, pull it up, and hit preview, and, it will, and then go down and load images. It already knows where you got them because you've already told it. If you look right... Oh, I, I'm sorry, but I forgot to change the name, didn't I? <laughs> I should have changed that to, to Biased. Okay. Uh, well, anyway, we, we've already got them in here. So we got all 20 of them in here. Let's see, it counts down to 20. So what we're going to do is we're going to 
tell it that we want to look at them. Now I'm going to open them up. Now when it opens them up, the very first one is sitting there. Now watch, we'll next through them, you see how they go. Now these are going to be a little bit darker than what, uh, you're going to see some darker ones in here. Uh, I never did have understood why they do it that way, but that's the way it works, I guess. You can see uh, a couple of things show up every now and then as it heats. Now, the longer you use your camera, the hotter it gets. Even though you're cooling it, it the temperature will change in that camera. Um, needless to say, I would not have a camera that didn't have a cooler on it. I'm going to tell you that right now. All right, so we're going to go all the way through them, and we're going to say we're done with them. All right, now, the next thing you want to do, now that you've got these, um, don't erase them. And the reason you don't want to erase them is, and I'll show you, is look at the file. If you look at the file, we have 20 of them. Suppose you decide you don't need 10. Well, you ain't got to shoot them again. If you'll come back and click on the first 10, and make a master with just the first 10. So then you'll have a master file uh, with the same temperature, same settings, everything the same, except you will only have 10 of them, a, a stack of 10 instead of 20. Uh, is that any reason for that? Now yeah, you might decide that doing 50 of them or 40 of them actually introduced something into your uh, picture. And the way to get around it is to reduce the number of you, that you're putting in there. And let's say you were doing 50 and found that you didn't need them, you may want to cut it down to, say, 30. Well, you'll have to reshoot them again. No, you won't. You come back to it and just grab the first 30, and you're good to go. Make your new master. All right. That being said, let's uh, close that out for a minute. What we want to do now is we want to stack these and make a master. So we're going to go to Batch. Go down to Align and Combine. Uh, we're going to save stack. We're not going to do any kind of alignment. We're going to average them, and we need to cut this one off down here. Okay, and now it's going to ask us which ones we want. It says, what well, I was telling you, right here we can just pick 10 of them if we want. Or we can do all 20. Uh, let's go ahead and do all 20, since that's what we decided we wanted to do. And... Click open. Now what's happening is it's going through every one of them and it's stacking them up and it's going to come back and it's going to ask me for a name for them. Doesn't take very long. All right, right here. Now since we did 20, I'm going to make a master and I'm going to say a bias. And I did 20 of them. Uh, we can use an underscore if you want, uh, or you can just put 20 and negative 20. Okay, now that would be our first master. Okay. Now, I'm going to do it again just to show you what I, what I was saying. Let's go down and let's do a line and combine. Again, do none, do average, cut this one off here. We don't need, we don't have any stars we want to line up on. This is, that's for something else. All right, now this time I want to do just 10 of them. Go down to number 10. Okay. Now it's going to do 10 of them. And then it's going to ask for a name. We're going to give it a master. And we're going to call it bias, and we're going to call it 10 at negative 20. Okay? And when we save it, here's what we're going to do. Let's go back over here and look at our file. Under our file, let's go in here and see. Now, we, we just made us two, uh, two masters. Now, look right here. You see this? This is a, a master bias 10, 20. That'd be 10, uh, uh, 10 frames at negative 20. And the first one we did was master bias with 20 frames at negative 20. And that, that's, that's all you have to do. Now, if you want to uh, have a look, 
and compare them, uh, I don't see ain't you see very much difference in them. But uh, hmm. All right. there's one. Uh, see, you can't tell the difference in them. We're bouncing back and forth between the two. If you look right up here, you see there's the, there's a bias 10 with negative 20, and I hit the next one, it goes to bias 20. So they look pretty much the same. So that's what we're talking about. Uh, so that's how you would make your library. Uh, the first day I was doing this, I'd probably shoot me a little extra ones. Like uh, if I was planning on using just 20, I'd probably shoot me about 40, and go ahead and build me a library of them to use. If you have no intentions of doing that, shoot whatever you need. Okay, now let's go back over and look at uh, uh, our our little worksheet and see what, what we need to do next. Alright, we're back in office and uh, we're going to look at darks now. Now under darks, it's a little bit different. For dark, we're going to call them dark. You can call them whatever you want, but I like to call them dark. And we're going to have how many? Let's say 20, just like we did a while ago. Let's just do 20. And for duration, now, duration is something we didn't have on the other. The duration is the amount of exposure that we're going to give it. Now, that could be like whether we shot it at 10 minutes or whatever, I mean, uh, seconds. Let's go down here and see what we can do. Let's look at darks right here. You see here? Now, you can forget all this stuff right here. That's neither here nor there. If we're going to do darks for one second, 20 seconds, 30, 60, that's a minute, a minute and a half, you, you, you get the point. That's what's going on right there. Now, if we go, suppose we decide we're going to do them for 20 seconds since we did the others, you know, uh, let's do that. Now the other one was, we didn't do it for 20 seconds. When you remember, it was a bias. Now this right here is how long we're going to do it. Now, now it all depends on uh, if you shoot, uh, I like 20. It, it's just do 20. If you're going to do uh, your, your pictures at 30 minutes, you're going, uh, I mean 30 seconds, you're going to expose a picture for 30 seconds, you need to do the darks. For pretty much the same amount of time that you're doing it. So we're going to do, uh, let's say we're going to do them for 20. All right, so we're going to have, we're going to do 20 of them at 20 seconds, and uh, the temperature is going to be negative 20. I know that's going to be confusing, but I decided to just make them all be the same. And of course, category would be, we're going to go with unity just like we did before, okay? That's, that, that's what we're going to do. Now let's go over to net velocity and we have to set that up. Alright, we're back in net velocity and we're going to go ahead and take our darks. Now before we do, let's go down and uh, get us a directory before we forget it because I have a bad habit of that. Now we're going to go and go look at our camera and uh, I do have one called Darks and I got a section called Long, Lucky, and Unity. We're going to use Unity. This will allow us to automatically save our files without having to put that word in its category. Alright, we're going to call this Dark. And we're going to take, now I did change this a little bit. We're going to take five of them. Because of the duration, I mean, how long these are going to take is a kind of a, a long time. So for the sake of the film here, we're, we're going to go ahead and do this. And we're going to take them for five seconds each. And they will be negative 20 degrees. Okay? So we're going to have them, we're going to take five exposures at five seconds each at negative 20 degrees. And we're ready to go. All 
All right, it's already done four. And that should be it. It's already done all of them. That's it. All right, it says the sequence is done. Okay, so let's go look. Now, remember now, you've already told it where you, where you wanted them to say, so all we gotta do is go say load images. Now, if you look, we're in dark unity, and there's our five right there. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to make us a master. So uh, what we we need to do is get out of this and let's go to batch, go to align and combine, save stack, no alignment. We're going to do an average function and we need to cut this one off. I wish they would have made that default off. I don't know why they do that, but anyhow. All right. Now, it wants to know which ones we want. We want that one through this one. And you notice what it's done. It says each one of them, and then right at the end, it, it tagged on the number, the number of the frame. So we're good to go there. All right? We're going to tell it that's what we want. Now, what it's doing right now is it's stacking them. It wants a name. We're going to call it Master Dart. And we did... How many? We did five. Remember? I'll tell you what we can do. We'll put an underscore in there. We did a five, and we did them for five seconds at negative 20. That's up to you how you want to put them in there. Now, what it's going to do is watch how it names it. Let's go and have a look and see. We're going to go right back in there. Now, there's our master file. We got a master dart file. There are five stacked at five seconds each in a negative 20. And that's all it is to it. Okay. So that should take care. Now, what you need to do is you need to go back and review on the other video how to shoot them and we pretty much did it again right here but uh i may have left out a few things because i my assumption is you have re have looked at the other video okay so that's done to step out okay what we're going to do is our flats now before now well first off i've already got the camera let's say we just got through shooting some this last night and i left it to this morning now what we done we need we need to make sure we do this leave the telescope alone uh you i would not move anything on the focus i wouldn't try to rotate the camera i wouldn't add anything in it or, or, or even try to use a telescope for anything else that involved anything to do with focus or, or adding something or taking away something from the photo train. What you want to do is you want to shoot a flat that takes anything from the camera to the end of the telescope. That's everything. You're looking for dust bunnies, lint, dirt, anything that's in there. Water smudges that's been dried from dew and it's got a little dust in it. Anything like that. Or any kind of misalignment in a lens. You'll see that too. Now, before I told you, uh, when I did my flats, I'd put my light box on and I shot my flats. Now, mine seemed to work okay. And we'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, other people say they use t-shirts over the telescope and shoot them that way. Um, shoot the wall, whatever that's lit up. Now, you have to shoot for a, a, medium, a, a midpoint of the ADU. Of your of your camera, you need to find out what that is and shoot for fifty percent of it. That's basically what it works out to be. Mine turns out to be really it gives me a good image at twenty three thousand. And we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to the computer again. Now, on my previous video, it showed some little grid patterns inside of my uh, flat, but. Uh, I went back and reviewed them and it turns out that it was probably something to do with a video capture machine that I was using. 
uh, I'm not using that same one. I'm using a different one now. And what I've done is I've just, now I did check them and see, and I did not find anything wrong with my flats. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to suggest you do this. Uh, on the light box, which I have down here, you can add something like tracing paper, a couple sheets of it in, over top of the glass itself. I couldn't find none big enough to fit this. Well, the only other thing to do is plexiglass that's uh, supposedly not completely transparent, but it but will allow you to see through it. It's white, solid white, and that's, that's the point. When I tried to get a sheet, they told me it would cost me $145. And I said, for, for what, 13 square inches? No, I'm 13 inch square. And they said, no, I had to buy the whole sheet. Uh, no, not going to happen. So what I decided to do was I decided to compromise. I got me a brand new T-shirt here. And what I'm going to do is what you need to do is no matter which way you're going to do it, my suggestion is, if you have any idea that that might be some kind of imperfection with your piece of glass in your uh, light box, if you make one, uh, anything, I don't care what it is, get you a t-shirt and put over the end. And then when you get it on there, get it tight, pull on your t-shirt like you see me doing right here and pull all the wrinkles out. You don't want any wrinkles in there. All right, let's get all that out. And the reason is, it'll show up in your picture. It actually added to your uh, your photo, and you don't want to. Uh, what we're trying to do is take something that's already in there out. So if we introduce something in here, guess what? <laughs> we just throw the monkey wrench in our stuff, and so now we got a problem. And you won't get that out. Okay, now I've got that perfectly flat, it looks like. And what we're going to do... If we're going to put our light box on it, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Now, like I told you before, I like using the light one. Uh, after adding this t-shirt to it, I may have to change that. We'll see. All right, that looks pretty secure. Now, I would have opened the door so you could see real good how this is going on, but I didn't want none of that light. This is the first day we've had sun, and I don't know when. And I'm afraid it'll hurt my scope. It sure give me a fit. So let's go and, and get on our computer and see if we can set the rest up. All right, we're back here in uh, in office. We're looking at our little calibration sheet that we made. We're going to be doing flats. And just remember now, flats are done a little bit different than darks. With flats, we want that telescope optical train to stay exactly the way it was when you shot your pictures. If you shot three different images last night and then this morning you're going to try to do your flats, that's not going to be too good. You're going to have to do your flats after each set of images. If you shot three galaxies across the sky, each one of those, when you finished, you would have to do your flats. Okay, ah, well, that's enough of that. Now, on flats, flats don't care about temperature. The only thing they care about is that optical train, and that's very important. So the only thing we're going to capture on here is that we're going to give it a flat name, and we're going to give it the number of exposures that we're going to do. Let's just do five, just to make it, uh, we're going to wrap this up. So we're going to do five. Now, we can't exactly tell how many exposures would be uh, how long the exposure is going to have to be or the duration if you look down here at my old one it was 0.475 if you remember right thing is i didn't have a t-shirt in it then so now i don't know what it's going to be this right here will show you just adding something into the optical train will change what happens in your telescope okay so let's go over to net velocity and set this up All right, we're back in their velocity, and we're going to shoot our flats. Now, we got all the information off our sheet that we needed. Let's go down first and look at our directory. We're going to select flats, and we're going to call them flat 
test two. The reason is I think there's some more in there and I won't be able to tell what they are. Okay, now we, we're going to do five, but right now we need to determine what that duration is. Now, do you remember on the sheet it said 0.475? Now, if you remember right, that's the number that we have to try to figure out. The other number, which was the 23,000, which was down here when you're doing the flats, or the mean, is when you're looking to, uh, for your ADU of your camera, you want your mean to be 50% for your flat. Somewhere in that neighborhood. I think the norm uh, suggested range is somewhere between 20,000 and 40,000. Uh, a lot of cameras are different. So you'll need to find out what yours is. Now I found out that 23 worked pretty good for mine before. Now with uh, a lot of changes I've made on my machine since I was doing some deep sky. So I may find that my 23,000 may not be what, my, what it's going to be from now on. But I will run some tests uh, on some deep sky objects if we ever get a sky. Okay, that being said, let's go up and look. Now, the only thing I can tell you to do here is, I tell you what we will do. Let's use that four, uh, that point four seven five, and see what it gives us. And then you'll see what just adding the t-shirt. See, remember now, before I didn't have a t-shirt on it. I have a t-shirt on it now, in addition to everything else. So let's see how that affected it. One thing for sure is. It'll affect this number right here. That's for definitely sure. Okay, let's do a preview. It's alright to me. The only thing is, look at this number down here. I mean, it's 40, 43,500. I don't think that's right. Let's, uh, Lordy, we probably could back that off quite a bit. I tell you what, let's just go down to about, let's go to 325 and see how that worked. Whoops. Let's see what that does. Let's do another one. Now you saw what that 475 gave us. <laughs> All right, point three two five brought it down to 29. All right, so we need to probably go. Let's try. Let's try even three. And see what we get. That's twenty-seven six. Uh, I wish I could tell you exactly what where it needs to be, but I can tell you. But if you look at this graph right here, you see this bar right there, uh, on this histogram. That hit that needs to be dead halfway. If you got it there halfway, you're 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 there. Uh, I tell you what, I'm going to go with. Uh, how about 0.275? Now I know this is boring, but uh, you, I want you just want you to see how you can affect it. You're not going to hurt anything, but you're going to see what you're looking for. Now that's 25. Now we we took off 25 of that. Let's, let's just go for 250 and see what we get. I'm going to call that okay. That's two three zero six six. That's close enough for me. Now, if you look at that right there, you're looking at that. That's halfway. Now, that's what you're looking for. Now, here's here's ours right here. What I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and change these at, uh, before I blow them up where you can see them. We're going to uh, go ahead and do them. So our number is going to be point two five zero. Now, before we go anywhere. A lot of people tell you, well, you don't need to shoot flats but one time uh, and figure this number out. That's that's probably okay. Uh, thing is, your focus may be different the next time you use it. Uh, you may rotate your camera. Uh, you may put a lens in there at a different, you know, maybe not straight up and down. You know, I'm talking about any kind of a filter or anything. Anything you put in there or move in that optical train right now will change this path. And when you go to use your flat, it won't match. Be on the safe side. Shoot your flats after you do your image or the next morning. Don't shoot any more images. Now, this is just my opinion. My opinion is 
set of images requires a set of flats. The next set of images requires its own set of flats. That's the way it works with me. Okay, so now I've got it set up. We're going to use this number right here. And we're going to, uh, this time we're going to capture them. I'm going to do five of them. We're going to let it go. And uh, there goes two, three. Man, this gun, <laughs> it's already done. It's already shot them. Now, what we'll do is we're going to go and we're going to stack them. So we'll go into batch. Uh, we're we'll going to align and combine just like before. Select save stack and no alignment and average stacking function and do uh, cut that one off. Okay. Now it's going to want to know what we're going to do with them. Uh, we're doing test number two. That'd be this one and this one. See, so there's some more up here. I'm playing around with this. All right. We're going to grab those. It's going to stack them up. Then it's going to want me to give it a name. Now we're going to call it master flat and we're going to call it test two. Okay. Okay. It says it's saved. Let's go get it and have a look at it and see if we got anything in here. Now, we, we already know where it's at. It's in here somewhere under, there it is, test two. Let's open it up. Now, I'm going to reduce this down where we can actually look at yonder. Let's see, I'll bring it on down for us. Now, that's down to 25, so I think that's lower as it'll go. No, it'll go some more. That's a little bit too low for me. All right, you see these little, I call, it, I call them dirt devils. They're really called dirt uh, dust bunnies. Uh, some of these are brighter than others. What I'm saying is that one is probably closer to my camera. Uh, there's no time. I've been handling the camera and the uh, uh, telescope quite a bit the last day or so. And these other ones are further on back. They're probably up there towards the, uh, uh, the objective edge, up there on the, uh, on the glass. So anyway... If you if you if you'll notice, I don't see any difference from this except maybe some different dirt than what it was last time. Except I've added a, a T-shirt, and that number changed. Okay, that about does it for uh, calibration frames for now. <laughs> All right, uh, we did a great review, and I would suggest that you go back and review that last video. This particular video was more or less to, to solve some questions, answer some problems people had, and uh, show you a little bit more hands-on on how to get this done and to create a library. Now, make the library and the calibration frames two separate items. Re look at that video again and make sure you understand how to shoot these. And this video will make sure, again, that you know how to shoot them and it'll help you make your library. You may not get it right at first, Play with it a little bit. You ain't got nothing else to do. It's raining all the time. So, okay. Uh, the next thing, uh, next time you see anything about calibration, it'll be part three, and it'll probably be something that you'll really like. Uh, we're probably going to do something between now and then, though. Uh, if you like what you saw, be sure to click like below. Uh, leave me some comments. Uh, let me, tell me what you, what you liked or did not like about it. And if you've got any kind of video that you want me to do or any kind of question uh, about some of the things that we've done or maybe something that you would like for me to do, uh, go ahead and put that in there. Give me, give me a suggestion. Uh, I'm always open for them. We're back now. We, we're going to try to get some things done. Hopefully, uh, it's now summertime. The only problem with being summertime in Florida is the thunderstorms and hurricanes and stuff all the time. So. I hope I can get something in there shortly. Uh, I'm looking. I'm, I got my fingers crossed. I got a day in mind. As I've already been told it's going to be beautiful, so uh, I got some work I got to do then. Uh, but we'll see. I hope Murphy don't come along. But anyhow, if you like what you saw, click like. If you haven't signed up before, subscribe, subscribe, and ring that little bell and make sure you get notified. So until next time, this is Stan Bone with Dreamworld Observatory and Backyard Astronomy. Keep looking up.